Welcome back to Teresa's Dad. My name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. And if you're new here, welcome. I have an awful garbage mouth where I tend to use fuck. <gasps> as a comma. If you're not into that or weird shit in general, bitch, this is not the place for you. Feel free to accept the video here. No harm, no foul. But I'll remember our time fondly. If you want to jump straight to the overall review of the products, I'll leave a time code down below. Feel free to jump ahead. Before I jump into my story, I do want to say that I had to close my P.O. box down. And the reason why I closed my P.O. box down is because it was where I used to live, or at least two towns over. And honestly, it's a fucking pain in the ass to get there from where I currently live. So I closed it down as of September 30th, and I plan on reopening a new box soon. I will let you know. And again, do not feel obligated to send me anything. If you feel like sending me something, whether it be an object or a fucking postcard, I will love it and treasure it forever. But do not feel obligated. A simple email or a comment or a message will suffice because I love your little fucking faces. Now with that said, let me share you something really gross that happened the other day. So they're doing construction in our office and the carpenters are currently removing these old filing cabinets and replacing them with new hotel style desks. In other words, we're basically starting to look like a fucking startup firm, which is very strange. Considering most of the furniture in that office is from 1976. When the carpenter started to remove all the filing cabinets, we noticed that there were presents left behind. And those presents happened to be mice. And at first I was like, wow, that dust bunny looks like a perfectly shaped mouse. I then had to ask my coworker to confirm that what I was seeing was actually a mummified mouse. And in her exact words, she said, that shit had eyes. And I know you're probably saying, oh my God, Teresa, that's disgusting. And you're right, it is, but it's kind of our normal. And if you think that's bad, currently there are so many old school mouse traps in that office that every day I pray that I step into one so I can start collecting workers comp. But I don't, it never happens for me. <sighs> now these are not your run of the mill mice. These are midtown mice, which basically mean that they're faster, fatter, and smarter than most of my colleagues. In any case, for three hours, that mouse was in the middle of our office floor and no one, myself included, did anything about it. And the best part is, I know that there were so many people actually currently interviewing that they all saw the mouse. I can't even imagine what the managers were saying to these candidates. Oh yeah, we have a great team here, but we also have wonderful benefits. 401k, medical, dental, vision, tuition reimbursement if you feel so inclined, and dead mice in the middle of the office. I hope you enjoy that stench. That's included in the 3% cost of living increase that we give our employees each year. <laughs> Anyway, so after a while I was like, I'm kind of sick of seeing the mouse. I figured let me go tell one of the managers because then they can call building services because it's also very strange in our job. Like you can't directly call places. It's like you have to have a certain level of clearance to do things. I don't, I don't, whatever. It's above my pay grade at this point, okay? Anyway, so when I went to go alert one of the managers that there's this creature in the middle of the room, the manager kind of shooed me away and thought I was joking. I'm not joking, bitch. They said, okay, fine, I go back to my desk. But before I go to my desk, I walk past and I still see the mouse sitting in the middle of the floor. So whatever, I go back to my desk, I continue to work. And about 10 minutes later, I hear the same manager that I talked to. I heard the manager say, this is disgusting. Someone needs to clean this up right away. So me being the true asshole that I am, decided to walk past the manager and say, oh boy, I've seen you found me. Hi, pal. <laughs> Can I tell you, manager didn't really find that funny, but I found it hilarious. And that's really all that matters. On today's video, we're going to be talking about the new Makeup Revolution Halloween collection. Ooh, spooky. So in this video, I'll be talking about three eyeshadow palettes, two different types of highlighters, and one liquid lipstick. So let's start off with the liquid lip. Halloween Vinyl Liquid Lip retails for $6. We are freaking out over our new Halloween lip launch. It will include these three stunningly vivid vinyl liquid lips to give you the high shine, spookiful finish, and two devilishly smooth matte liquid lips that will last all night long. Creep it real with this pink nude matte liquid lip color to add a bit of soft glam to any Halloween makeup. Actually, before I jump into my review, please know that I purchased all this stuff through MakeupRevolution.com. I didn't get any of this stuff at Ulta, so keep that in mind if you do want any of this stuff. And I'll be very honest, when I did purchase this stuff, it actually shipped pretty fast and I got it within a few days. So with that said, there were a few liquid lipstick options, but ultimately I decided to get the shade Bewitched because I am just a basic ass bitch. What can I say? I really do love a pink nude. And I think out of all the colors, this is something that I felt like I could actually wear every day as opposed to some of the other colors that were like 
straight up blood red or some sort of kind of gothy vamp. So that's why I chose this one. Now with that said, I really do find that this is a very beautiful color. The packaging is really, really adorable. You have these little cobwebs adorned in these like little red roses. It's really super cute. The whole aesthetic is really nice. I really do love the frosted glass bottle. It's very lightweight and just, I don't know, it's just kind of really sleek looking for Makeup Revolution. The doe foot on this guy is actually pretty comfortable. It definitely has like a crooked dick tip. Did find it really comfortable when applying this to my lips. Now the liquid lipstick actually has a very weird texture. When it goes onto your lips, it feels almost gloss-like or just very oily in a weird way. And it actually has kind of like a weird medicinal taste. Think of like really shitty cough syrup. That's what this tastes like. Very fucking gross. When I started to apply it to my lips, I noticed that it was a little bit patchy. So I had to kind of keep going in a couple of times to make it really opaque and even. So once you have finished your application, it actually does dry down pretty fast. I think overall though, I'm just not a huge fan of this formula. It's a bit too drying in my opinion and I feel like I need some sort of gloss to add to my lips because it feels like my lips are being strangled to death. My lips feel a little bit too tight and it just feels really uncomfortable but when I add a gloss on top of it it feels slightly better but still I feel that tightness in my mouth. That's what she said! <laughs> Because it's so dry, it's causing me to lick my lips to kind of give me some sort of fucking hydration. And every time I do that, I just taste medicine. This is the first time I'm ever picking up a liquid lipstick from this brand. I think it is anyway. And basically I won't make that mistake ever again. So if you have dry lips like me, this is really going to suck for you. So I would totally advise you to skip out on this. Halloween Skull Highlighter. Retails for $6. Trick or treat yourself to the Halloween Skull Highlighter and an iridescent ghosted shade. The shimmery liquid can be dripped along the cheekbones, Cupid's bow, nose to create a scarily good glow. Be prepared to have everyone spooked when you show them the skull head bottle. Warning, not for basic witches. The next thing I wanna talk about is the Liquid Skull Highlighter, which, how fucking cute is this? Packaging wise, this is fucking 10 out of 10 out of 10 out of 10. Fucking love this shit. Too bad this is terrible. Actually, if you look at it really closely, it looks like sparkly jizz. And the kicker is that it actually kind of smells like bleach. Joke's on me, I put this on my face already. This was so fucking messy. I don't understand how to use this product. I don't fucking get it at all. It always looked like I was being glazed and not in a sexy way either. It always just left this weird overly white cast on my face. No matter what I did trying to use my fingers to buff it out, using a brush, a sponge, over foundation, under foundation, over sea CC cream, like I tried everything with this thing and I've had the same result every time which is just a thick white paste on my fucking face. And it's so strange because when I put it on my hand, it looks beautiful. Which then I thought, well, you know what? Maybe this is a body highlighter. But nope, according to the description, you could put this all over your fucking face. I just don't know how or why the fuck you would want to do it. The consistency is kind of a little slimy. And like I said, it just smells like pure chemicals. How the fuck would you want that on your face or your body for that very matter? Personally, I don't think it's worth it. I think you could steer clear from it. I know this is actually currently at Ulta. If you're a packaging slut like me, yeah, yeah, okay, get it for the fucking packaging because honestly, at the end of the day, even though I'm not gonna be using the contents of this bottle and I really didn't have any expectation for this, I know I'll be buried with it. So this will live on and on and on forever and ever. Amen. I Heart Revolution Halloween Eyeball Highlighter. Retails for $7. All eyes will be on you when you wear the eye cream highlighter. Forget being a basic witch this Halloween. It's all about being extra AF with your makeup look. You need this eye-popping highlighter because even ghouls like to look fire. Once you start squishing the eyeball compact cover, you'll find it hard to stop. <laughs> Open the compact to reveal a white silver sheen highlighter and inside mirror. It's a fantastic way to finish off your face and look just as good in daylight as you will in full moonlight. No matter what the occasion, this will make you glow all year round. The next thing I want to talk about are the two eye highlighters, which... Oh. Bitch. I know I said this in a makeup bingo video. When I saw these on the bus coming home, I lost my fucking mind. I literally went, oh my God, eyeball highlighters. And I fucking made eye contact with a woman. And she said, what? And I was like, eyeball highlighters. And she just like looked at me like I was a fucking idiot. And I was like, you stupid bitch. You're never gonna understand the beauty that is an eyeball squishy highlighter. So of course I ordered them as fast as humanly possible. And I realized I fucked up. I fucked up hardcore because I meant to get the white highlighter, which I did and I meant to get the pink highlighter in that case I didn't instead I got this kind of gold bronzy color but luckily it's actually incredibly light
white for some weird reason. So much like the last highlighters, the packaging on this is 10 out of 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 fucking 10. I love that the tops are super squishy. It makes me think of like Halloween in the 90s and I fucking love it. Like I could just see myself carrying around my little McDonald's Halloween basket. Now you can get McDonald's Happy Meal Pails for Halloween. There's a pumpkin pail, Boo. a witch, Boo. and a ghost Boo. that glows in the dark. You can get a different one each week until Halloween. Ooh. Ah! I was a fat, adorable child. Anyway, let me tell you a little bit about these highlighters now. I'll be very honest, I am a packaging slut. So I had really no intention of these actually working because every year I like to get a Makeup Revolution highlighter, the one that actually is kind of embossed in that little skull pan, and I adore it. The quality sucks, but I just love how it looks. So that's kind of like how I treated these highlighters. However, Makeup Revolution did release some highlighters very recently, the banana one and the pineapple one that has a really good fucking quality. So I was very hopeful that these highlighters would come from the same stock. Both of these highlighters are a bit on the powdery side. It's a little annoying because like when you first put them on with a brush, it literally just looks like a streak of white and it doesn't look like it melts into your skin or anything like that. So you kind of need like another brush to like buff it into your skin. By then you notice that you lost some of your shine. So you kind of have to keep going back and forth a bunch of times for you to kind of achieve this alien slut glow, which sucks, but you can fucking do it. So while I really do love me a good white highlight, it was just kind of too much for me. It felt like it was like white out on my face. But I did find that when I added the gold highlighter on top of it, it diffused the white from it being so shocking, but still kept this really, really nice glow. But again, I had to keep going back on top of it, buffing it out, putting more product, buffing it out, putting more product. Like It was like a whole fucking vicious cycle. But at the end of the day, I feel very happy to look like a glowy alien slut. What's unfortunate about these highlighters is that they are not smooth at all. They actually have some grit to it. And you can actually see that there is like a light, hard panning already starting to happen, which really fucking sucks. Actually, I really noticed it when I was using my finger in the pan. I kind of just noticed this like really kind of shitty sandpapery grit feeling. It's really not nice, but I do love that it comes with a compact mirror. Packaging wise, like I said, 10 out of 10, like this is really fucking adorable. I just wish the product inside of it was a little bit better. Although while I did achieve what I wanted to achieve, it took a long fucking time and you really kind of have to question, was it worth it? Eh. It's okay. I feel like I have highlighters in my collection that I can achieve this look with literally like one sweep of the goddamn brush. I didn't need to apply this on eight times. Mm. But at the end of the day, I'm really excited that it does work. It's on a complete loss like last year's Halloween highlighter. So I guess that's a win in my book. Packaging alone, it's kind of worth it. It's really fucking cute. And I can't wait to put this in my acrylic cases so it looks like I have two eyes staring at you. My life is sad. Whether you're a basic witch, glampire, or cool ghoul, Makeup Obsession has you covered this spooky season with a full range of Halloween products. You'll be too cool for school in this Makeup Obsession Take It to the Grave Shadow Palette, featuring an earthy mix of five matte and five shimmer shades. It includes a bright mustard, a metallic gunmetal, and a shimmering chartreuse to create an eerie look that will knock them dead. Take It to the Grave is actually really interesting. I think overall, I really do like this compact, but at the same time, kind of looks a little cheap, but I really do love the bold green writing on it. And I love that I can see the color story. I feel like it actually makes it stand out a little bit more compared to the other palettes in this collection. However, it does still look cheap. It kind of looks like a very big version of a Wet n Wild compact. So I'm kind of torn when looking at this packaging, but the color story in this makes my makeup dick so fucking hard. I think out of the three Makeup Revolution palettes that I'm gonna be reviewing today, this unfortunately is my least favorite. I found that the quality of the shadows are a bit on the rougher side and they're definitely a way drier formula than I'm used to. And they require you to build up the product a lot. Like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Some of the matte shades have a nice opacity. Say like the yellow one down here, which is actually surprisingly decent mustard. And this orange shade is lovely. But the other mattes in the collection, especially looking at this fucking white shade, it takes a while for anything to show up. There is no pigment in that fucking eyeshadow at all. I tried my best to kind of make like a weird candy corn type eye. And no matter how much product I was putting on the inner corner of my lid, it would disappear in a second. It's weird because it feels like it, there's gonna be product on your lid, but there isn't. I don't know where the fuck it is. The only way I found that shade to kind of work for me, it was kind of an inner corner highlight, but still I had to dip in that pan about 12 times for anything to fucking show up. Really disappointing. Now, the first time I used this palette, I didn't like it at all. And I found that the colors did not mesh very well. And I felt like my overall look turned really shitty. I've since played with this palette a few times 
and I've had way better experiences. But again, it required me to use a lot of product to get any sort of opacity. And I found that actually using my fingers was the best thing I could potentially ever do when using this palette. For whatever reason, brushes just were not picking up any of the product. Now, when I get the eyeshadow to where I want it to be, lasting power is fucking incredible, which I find really funny because there were many days where I've had this palette on for more than 12 hours and it looked fucking fantastic. But when I think about it, it's like a lot of work for a little reward. I think what annoys me about these shadows is that they have definitely a waxy feel to them, which I'm not used to, and it makes them slightly off-putting. It's not your typical Makeup Revolution eyeshadows. And since Makeup Revolution is kind of pretty much like an umbrella brand, and they have Makeup Obsession, iHeart Revolution, Makeup Revolution Pro, like et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I have never tried anything from this brand. And if this is the normal standard quality, I don't think I will ever get anything from this line again. And I don't hate it, but I certainly don't love it either. And I will never probably reach for this. Honestly, if I can go back in time, I don't think I would have ever picked it up. But at an $8 price point and the color story, it seemed like an attractive idea. I advise you guys not to fucking feed into this. I don't think this palette was worth it at all. And if you can, totally skip out on it. I Heart Revolution Halloween Slime Chocolate Palette retails for $15. It's time to trick or treat yourself to another ghoulishly delight I Heart Halloween Chocolate Palette. Slay with slime. A shadow palette covered in gruesome green casing and filled with bright matte and shimmer shades. Creep it real with black sludge, purple ooze, green aliens, or silver goo. Play around with neon radioactive yellow, blood orange volcano, and toxic orange. If you got it, haunt it. The next palette I want to talk about is the slime palette. So this guy retails actually for $15 and it comes in the normal standard Makeup Revolution chocolate bar line. Except with this adorable Nickelodeon slime green-esque packaging, which is fucking adorable. Adorable. So when I ordered this online, I was very excited. However, when I got it in person, I don't know, I just kind of felt a little underwhelmed by the color story. I think for slime, I was expecting so much more. I was expecting some sort of like toxic colors, but in reality, what I got was some neons and a bunch of earth tones. And it kind of made me really question whether or not I really needed to have this. There was nothing really interesting about this other than the outside packaging. Now, like I mentioned, this is from the iHeart Revolution brand. So I kind of had an idea in mind of what these shadows were going to be like. And I believe my tried and true avocado palette comes from the same line. So I was really hopeful that the quality would be the same. I found overall that the colors are not as vibrant as they are in the avocado palette. It's definitely not a bad thing, but they are definitely on the drier side and require you to build them up a little bit. Not as much as a Take It to the Grave palette. When I compare it to the avocado, definitely needs a little bit of love. Now, this palette and the avocado palette is very similar in the sense that the shadows has that same soft texture. I experienced a lot of kick up with this eyeshadow palette and a lot of fucking fallout. And the fallout was harder to clean on my face, unfortunately and that required me to use a makeup wipe to clean up any excess mess. The matte shades worked very well in the palette and I was happy how they built up and they blended together to make beautiful gradients. And I think overall, I prefer the mattes over the shimmer shades in this palette. The shimmer shades, you know, they worked well, but I immediately hit hard pan on majority of them, which is something I did not experience with the avocado palette. Also, the shimmer shades either require you to use some sort of a saturated brush, whether you're using setting spray or your spit, whatever the fuck you wanna do, I'm not here to judge. It was needed to show that pop of color. However, the best application was with your finger. I would the best thing about this palette is actually the lasting power of it because much like the previous palette this thing lasts all fucking day which is super goddamn impressive for drugstore shadows i didn't experience any sort of fading or cracking and that is when using the vibrant neon colors mixed with this beautiful blue up here. I didn't experience any sort of shittiness at all i think for the price point of 15 dollars it's okay it's not the best I've ever used. It's not the worst though. It kind of falls somewhere in the middle. I think overall, again, comparing this to the avocado palette, I think my biggest complaint is that quality is not exactly the same. And I really, really wish that they took that extra step to make this palette really, really slimy looking. I feel like they kind of played it safe. Like I liked where they were going with the neons. They could have used a lot of good greens. I think they would have made the palette perfect. And of course, you know, make the quality better, but that's besides the point. Halloween Rainbow Shadow Palette retails for $15. Enter the the rainbow palette to find an array of bright matte shades and metallic shimmer and pressed glitter eyeshadows. If you want to go more chic than creep, then this is the perfect palette. Create magical eye looks with imagined pink, sky dye blue, and magical purple. That's every color of the rainbow and it's just waiting to be made with wow creations. 
So the last palette I wanna talk about is the Unicorn palette. I fucking really like this. More than I thought I ever would actually. Now this is from the Discover Revolution line. Now, funny story, when I received this palette and I opened it next to the slime palette, <laughs> I was like, fuck bitch. They look really fucking similar. Yep. And the reason why I didn't pick up the Haunted House tin is because, I don't know, just my makeup dick wasn't getting hard for that. Although don't get me wrong, I prefer the packaging of that one to this fucking happy bright unicorn bullshit. As you guys know, I'm deep down a 14 year old goth girl practicing witchcraft in her closet. Now with that said, the quality of these eyeshadows is pretty fucking nice and it's actually the same retail value as the I Heart Revolution palette. So this palette actually has a lot of kick up, a lot of fallout, and again, much like the last palette, requires you to use a makeup wipe to clean up any sort of excess. So if you were interested in getting this palette or the previous palette, I recommend doing your eye makeup first and then your base. You will thank me later. I didn't have any issues with building up color. I didn't have any issues with patchiness or fading or cracking or breaking, nothing. Like this, this was really fucking good. Again, this is another palette that the shades just blend so well into each other and it creates beautiful gradients. And I found that my blending was so seamless. It was fucking really good. Now this palette does have some pressed pigments and unfortunately there is some light staining, but nothing too crazy. It goes away in about a day or so. And I wanna note that I didn't have any sort of eye irritation with any of the pressed pigments or normal eyeshadows. So for this particular portion of the review, I wanna show you two different looks because I actually kind of found a weird, somewhat dupable version of this one eye look that I love to do with the Jeffree Star Alien palette. Granted, I prefer the Alien palette over this, like hands down because that quality is fucking top notch. See what you will about the man. He knows his shit when it comes to makeup, except for that blue blood palette. That shit is garbage. Sorry, but not sorry. And thirsty. <sighs> Spooky. But it is really nice to know that if you are interested in kind of those grungy-esque colors of the Alien palette, you could kind of somewhat create that look using this palette. I don't want to say it's a complete dupe 100%. Think of it more as like the Diet Coke version of it. I definitely think out of all the three palettes that I've tried in this whole like makeup collection, this is by far my favorite. I had absolutely no issue with any of these shades. They work so beautifully together. It's a really beautiful, affordable rainbow palette. It actually has a really lovely duochrome and a beautiful fucking silver. It's your duochrome and that's your silver. Like fuck me up bitch. Take me to your leader so I can fuck him. I definitely see myself reaching for this palette time and time again and I'm gonna probably put it in the rotation. Like that's how much I really like it. I'm pleasantly surprised how much I like this palette out of the whole collection. I thought a lot of this was gonna be gimmicky bullshit that I was only wasting my money purely for packaging. But I'm happy to say that this is actually pretty good. I'll be the worst packaging out of everything, <laughs> but the best quality. I'll take it. The other thing that's super wonderful about this palette, and much like the other two palettes, the lasting power, again, is super fucking great, lasts all goddamn day. And I don't know what is in this fucking formula of all the Makeup Revolution shadows, but I have never had things stay on that good for a drugstore. That is fucking impressive. I will give them that. Regardless of my feelings on the other two palettes, the durability and the lasting power of these shades, holy shit. Like, like I said, they rival against a lot of higher end brands that don't nearly come as close to what I experienced with these shadows like that I will say snaps to them actually I want to zoom you in to show you what I have in my eyes today I unintentionally turned myself into my merch <laughs> turned myself into an alien slut but I actually created this look which I'm sorry I didn't film I did it today very quickly and I used the unicorn palette to create it in any case I fucking love how the colors fucking blend so nice into it and I love how incredibly pigmented this silver eyeshadow is. It's truly top notch. Now I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know down below how you feel about this collection. Are you gonna be picking anything up? Are you gonna be waiting for it to come into Ulta? Do you care? Do you not care? Are you kind of bummed out that there really isn't a lot of good Halloween makeup this year? Because I am. I'm super fucking upset about it. And on that note, I want to say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button. It's free. And hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Discord. On Thursdays, we have a podcast called The Miserable Three. And sometime I'm on my husband's Twitch channel where I just yell about things on the internet. Everything that is on my face, including links to all these products as well as my fucking merch. Everything will be listed in the description box below. And I'll see you, little pumpkins, later. Bye.